If Rolex is the world's most famous watch brand, the Submariner is the world's most famous watch. It's an article of pop culture. It is the object of adulation and derision. And in its latest form, is it subpar or should you be green with envy? This is the collector's take. The story of the Rolex Submariner starts in 1953, when the sub became the archetype of the modern dive watch. Refinements considered critical to the modern sub continued apace through 1959, with the arrival of the first crown guards, and 1966 with the arrival of the first date model. In the late 70s, the sub goes lux, gaining a sapphire crystal. Fast forward to 2003, and we gain our first green Submariner. Nicknamed the Kermit, it is officially the 50th anniversary watch. In 2008, the modern supercase, squared off in sheer, debuts as the Smurf, but in 2010, it gains a green counterpart. The second green sub, green of bezel and of dial, this one is nicknamed the Hulk. This watch looks like a fusion of 1953, 2003, and 2010. There is no such thing as planned obsolescence at Rolex. The buyer of the original 1953 Submariner would recognize this watch as the descendant of his, and I have no doubt that in the year 2053, the buyer of that Submariner will recognize today's Sermit as the ancestor of his machine. Check out the bracelet, the best part of any Rolex. It's substantial, it's solid. The Oyster is a design icon in its own right. Solid end links, solid center links, removable links fixed by screws. Take a quick look at the clasp. It's a single fold deployant, but don't lose the refinements. Two locking factors. One is the outer clamshell, pop that open, and then there's a complex spring-loaded lift lock system with a beak and a hook. Again, it is a double locking clasp. Go inside, take a look at the best part of the clasp. It's called glide lock. 20 millimeters of adjustment in two millimeter increments. It's great for micrometric sizing for fit, but you can also pull it out as an all or nothing extension over a dive suit. Roll over to the case. Of course, this is the super case, which means though it's a 41 mil, it actually looks quite a bit bigger on the wrist. But here's the thing, it's quite versatile. Though 41 compared to the previous watch is 40, it's actually the same thickness and lug to lug the same breadth across the wrist. Satin lug hoods, polished flanks, rather spare, shallow crown guards to prevent shearing, a trip lock crown and 300 meter water resistance. How do we know it's a trip lock? Well, it has three dots. Take a look at the bezel. There's a wonderfully sharp and tactile knurling on the edge and a dichotomous glide. I call it that because it is both at the same time silky and crisp. The detents, 120 of them, are precise and pronounced. Modern day alchemy. The bezel insert is a combination of scratch resistant green ceramic and white platinum deposits for the indices and the numerals. The dial vies with Grand Seiko for the title of best mass market luxury dive watch dial. It is singular, glossy, gleaming, almost enamel-like lacquer, and 18 karat white gold hands and indices to prevent tarnish, oxidation, and discoloring over time. Don't overlook what's on the inside. Yes, there's a solid case back, which actually helps keep the watch thin, but the Rolex Caliber 3235 is a mechanical marvel. The Chronergy Escapement is Rolex's answer to the Omega Coaxial, and it's just as effective. The watch gains a three-day power reserve, or 70 hours to be precise. It's extraordinarily efficient and shock resistant with a niobium zirconium hairspring that in reality probably makes the watch more than 1,000 Gauss anti-magnetic, and it's a certified chronometer, not just with the COSC, Rolex goes beyond, taking the COSC certified movement, casing it up, and then testing it to run no worse than plus two, minus two seconds per day. That is the basis for the term superlative chronometer on the dial. Frankly, the boxed set is minimal, and that's fine. What's there is distinctive. There's an outer sleeve, an outer box, and of course the green Rolex inner display box. Flip it open. It's mostly tan, but it has a few secrets. There's a cushion on which your watch is mounted. There is a model-specific reference hang tag in white, and then there is the superlative chronometer seal hang tag in green. There's a secret compartment with a leatherette mini wallet. You have the gradient green Rolex warranty card, good for 
for five years. And then on the other side, you have a warranty booklet and a rather quirky user's guide. I say quirky because it includes mention of a 40 millimeter case from the previous generation watch, as well as one of the few uses of the term waterproof I've seen on any luxury watch made since the 60s. There's no doubt the sub has gotten a lot bigger since the first screen sub back in 2003. It's gotten a super case, it's gotten a 41 millimeter case, and it's a heck of a lot more solid. That said, the Rolex sub remains one of the few dive class watches that I can still recommend unreservedly to him and to her. This is a rare unisex option by virtue of its relatively compact and flat dimensions. Frankly, as with a Gulfstream jet, driving a Ferrari, or carrying certain Hermes Birkin bags, wearing a Rolex Submariner makes you a celebrity. This watch inadvertently carries its own paparazzi. If you like questions, including some questions about your wealth and status, the Submariner is a great way to go. Do you own one of the first, or even better, both of the first green Submariners? Well, to complete the trilogy, you've got to consider the Sermit alongside your Hulk and your Kermit. Are you Namor, the Submariner? Well, Namor, you're the bootleg Aquaman no more. Strap this thing to wrist and show that upstart from DC who's the real king of Atlantis. Nautilus shoppers, Richard Meal shoppers, AP Royal Oak shoppers, guess what? You get the same status and stature wearing this $26,000 used Submariner that you will get wearing your quarter million dollar RM1103. Do I have your attention? I certainly hope so. I understand that finding a new Submariner at the dealer at list price can be tougher than finding a lifeboat on the Titanic, but unlike Kate Winslet, you don't have to settle for a door. Stick with the house of Rolex Tudor and check out the Tudor Pelagos left-hand drive. Yes, it's a 42, but it's in titanium. It's a deeper diver with a helium escape valve and a color and a character in left-hand drive form that rivals the new green sub. It also features Rolex Tudor's best all-around dive clasp, and yes, that's compared to the Submariner. The Oris Aquis Caliber 400, possibly the best new dive watch of the last 20 years, the 43.5 or 41.5 millimeter Aquis 400 includes a 10-year service interval, a 10-year warranty, a 5-day power reserve, and quick-release lugs for quick swapping between strap and bracelet, and get this, $3,500. So where does that leave us? Well, for the first time in Collector's Guide, I had to stop listing valid alternatives because the dive watch class is so broad and deep. If you want a luxury diver, you have better priced and even better outright alternatives. But if this is about status, or you're considering a watch that might involve mortgage values, Richard Mille, Audemars Piguet, Patek Philippe, then, and only then, does a $26,000 Rolex Submariner start to make sense. And that is the collector's take.